This novel's title is now used to describe being trapped in circumstances because of contradictory rules. But there's a catch. Catch-22. Yes. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and in this installment of Mojo Notes, we'll be exploring 10 things you should know about Joseph Heller's Catch-22. Number 10. About the author. Born in 1923 in East Hampton, New York, Joseph Heller began writing as a child. After high school, he took on several jobs and received his master's in English. Uh, then he says, well, you know, what kind of job can I have? And he says, well, you can have any job you choose uh, that we're willing to let you have. Uh, uh, you'll have complete freedom as long as you do whatever we want. While teaching and working, he wrote his own material, which included short stories, novels, and plays. He died of a heart attack in 1999. Number 9. Influences and Inspirations Heller's first novel was influenced by his experiences as a bomber aircraft crew member called a bombardier while serving in the U.S. Army Air Corps during the Second World War. However, the novel was actually written after in the early 1950s and was a satire of that decade and the Cold War. Catch-22's title refers to those situations that are inescapable due to conflicting rules. We want to move ahead with this as quickly as possible, but we have to go slowly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we have no ideas, but they're pretty firm. In the novel, it specifically relates to how the people in power use such rules to defend their misuse of that power. Number 8. Settings and Era Set in the 1940s during World War II, the novel contains references and technology that only appeared in the next decade. Weather conditions have improved tremendously over the mainland, so you won't have any trouble at all seeing the target. Of course, you mustn't forget, that means that they will have no trouble at all seeing you. This is because Heller stated Catch-22's anti-war and anti-government sentiments were meant as a criticism of the Korean War and the American government in the 1950s. The novel's physical setting encompasses the island of Pianosa and Rome, Italy. Number seven, plot. In Catch-22, an all-knowing third-person narrator describes events out of chronological order, alternating with the present time and the past with flashbacks. Help him, help him. Help who? Help the bombardier. I'm the bombardier, I'm all right. It follows Captain John Yossarian and his fellow airmen's experiences in the American Army during World War II. These include their struggles for survival as their group commander, Colonel Cathcart, sends them on dangerous missions. The number of missions required before you are eligible for rotation is raised to 75. I know we'll all do our best. Though he tries to avoid them, Yossarian is stuck completing the missions because of the Catch-22 rule and the military bureaucracy forcing him to oblige. Let me see if I got this straight. In order to be grounded, I've got to be crazy. And I must be crazy to keep flying. But if I ask to be grounded, that means I'm not crazy anymore and I have to keep flying. You've got it, that's Catch-22. Yossarian and company experience much death and horror before he ultimately escapes. Number six, Captain John Yossarian. As the protagonist, John Yossarian is a 28-year-old captain and bombardier who's paranoid everyone's out to kill him. <laughs> no one's trying to kill your sweetheart, now. Right? You deserve like a good boy. Oh, yeah? Then why are they shooting at me, Milo? They're shooting at everyone, Yossarian. And what difference does that make? The anti-hero's fear of war and death come from witnessing the horrible death of one of his former crew members. I'm told. Okay. You're gonna be okay. His hatred of war grows even stronger throughout the novel, so he uses several strategies to get out of it. For example, he tries to use the fact that most people think he's crazy to get out of doing more missions. Um, why is he talking to a dead man? Oh, he's Captain Yossarian. So? He's crazy. Who says so? I do. However, Catch-22's circular logic prevents his discharge. Yossarian doesn't care about medals, honors, or glory, and just wants to live his life. But he does show some concern for his squadron. Arthur, if anything happens to me, will you take care of my girl? Listen to him, his girl! Yossarian, don't worry. Nothing's gonna happen to you that won't happen to the rest of us. 
he abandons Colonel Cathcart's deal to send him home a hero and attempts to escape to Rome to start a new life after a friend makes a successful attempt. They'll catch you, they'll bring you back. I can do it. This is insane. I can do it. What about your clothes? They'll never recognize me without my uniform. You'll be on the run with no friends. You'll live in constant danger of betrayal. <laughs> Number five, Colonel Cathcart. I want to wish you good luck on today's mission. To those of you who won't be coming back, I like to say we're going to do our best to take care of your wives and or sweethearts. Though Yusarian has issues with many higher ranked officers, Cathcart is his main antagonist. As the group commander, Colonel Cathcart is willing to do anything to become general. He's conceited and paranoid everyone hates him. Well, we will issue orders sending you back to the States. And there's one thing you have to do for us in return. What would that be? I guess. Well, you'll be surprised how easy it is to like us once you begin. And yet, he continues to force his men to fly more missions than is generally required, so he'll look good to his superiors. Both Cathcart and Yossarian hate each other. You're a disgrace to your country. I'd like to know how you got to be a captain anyway. You promoted me. Number four. Dr. Danica and Milo Minderbinder. As Yossarian's friend, flight surgeon Dr. Danica is selfish, unappreciative, and often complaining. Though he'll tend to those in need when necessary, his fear of death and flying, as well as what he does to protect himself, lead to his downfall. Every time he goes up, he files my name as a passenger. That way I can get my flight pay without having to do anything stupid like going up in a plane. <laughs> Milo Minderbinder is the first lieutenant and mess officer who only cares about making money for the syndicate. You traded my parachute for a bunch of statues? Well, no, in point of fact. I traded our diesel engines for the statues. I don't have any diesel engines. I didn't say your, I said our. As such, he's greedy, lacks morals, and isn't loyal to any country or person unless it benefits him. Number three. Values and Themes The novel explores many themes, including the absurd power of the bureaucracy, especially through the rule of Catch-22. Don't you want to earn more unit citations, more oak leaf clusters on your air medal? Or don't you want to contribute further to this fleet record by flying more missions? No. In that case, we'll just have to send you home. Of course, there's one catch. It also looks at hypocrisy, greed, fear, death, and the ineffectiveness of language and communication. You admit it! I am now being persecuted. Yeah, by whom? By them! But who specifically is them? Every one of them! Every one of who? Every one of who do you think? I have any idea! Then how do you know they aren't? Ah. <laughs> Number two, modern popularity. Initially published to mixed reviews, Catch-22 became one of the 20th century's most important novels thanks to its themes. The cult classic is credited with bringing the expression in its title into use in English. I had to call him and said, hey, I got just a title for it. And I said, yeah, yeah, what is it? And he said, Catch-22. And I went, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, adaptations. While the novel has inspired music and stage versions, the most well-known adaptation is the 1970 Mike Nichols-directed film. Smack him in the face. Jab him in the kidneys! Though the Catch-22 movie differs somewhat from the book, Heller supported it and it's now considered a cult favorite. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite piece of Catch-22 trivia? Who is this man? <laughs> Major Danby, sir. Danby, D-A-N-B-Y. Take him out and shoot him. Yes, sir. Take Major Danby out and shoot him. With new top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.